And now for the final reveal. That looks awesome. In this video, I'm gonna teach you how to create some cool, awesome looking product photography using simple props from your local hardware store. Let's go see what I actually bought. What a lovely day to visit B&Q. And now, why am I here? It's to buy some props to help bring my product photography uh, video to life. Fingers crossed they got what I want. Let's go find out and then go shoot. So what have we bought? Well, you're gonna love this. Six concrete blocks, four massive aerated blocks, a reduced pack of tiles that are a nice color to go with this, and the final piece of the puzzle, ah, expandable trellis. What on earth are you there for? I'm hoping it will all become apparent later. Ah, I got six of these bad boys, fairly heavy. But they're a good shade and they've still got good texture on them. <laughs> these aerated concrete blocks and these have got, as you can see, some lovely texture on them. So when the light hits that, the shadows are going to be pretty awesome. Light coloured floor tiles. They've got a quite a nice bit of texture. Well, not texture, just detail that we can use as a surface to shoot on. And then the other thing that I got, which I'm most excited about for some reason it's very random expanding trellis wow now why do i want something like this combined with concrete well this won't be in the photograph this will be used to shine the light through to cause some awesome looking shadows you see the thing i want to shoot is this kind of urban setting for a pair of trainers i've had these for about two months now and I still haven't worn them because I know that I was gonna do a video on them. It's about time we finally popped their cherry, got them on screen so I can wear them, get them scuffed up. This is the area that I'm gonna be working in and I'm gonna build a set kind of with the items that we bought. And we're gonna light it with the Godox SL60W, but we're not gonna put a softbox on. Instead, we're gonna use hard lighting because I want those shadows to come through and have a nice bit of shadow play on the actual product. Okay, and we're just about finished the setup. Very, very precise mirrors here. We're playing with like a Minecraft level. And as you can see, we've got floating blocks and shoes just kind of suspended. So here is the shot so far. Now, I like it and uh, it's definitely looking along the lines of what I wanted with the floating block look and urban-y. But let's try and add that extra element, the metal fence uh, shadow, to try and make it lock in to the uh, urban look. We could add a skateboard and maybe, because it's a long shot speed, we could have the, the wheels doing motion blur, which looks like that in the final shot. As you can see, that is the metal fencing shadow. And here you can see my, my camera settings. So I'm on a quarter of a second, F14 and ISO 200. Now I think in the F14, it's making the skateboard a bit too in focus. You know what, let's just try a 2.8. You may notice the, the color change between the shots because the sun keeps coming in and out of cloud. Now, usually I wouldn't shoot this with a, a constant light such as this one, but for the purpose of a YouTube video, I wanted to kind of show you what I'm doing. Usually I would shoot with a strobe and that would overpower any natural light coming through. Um, and it would provide a much crisper shot in the end, I think as well. Um, but this is for the purpose of the video. You can use, just to show also that you can use a hundred pound light to create these effects. It's doing a good job. Here's some quick tips while we're doing this video. What I've learned in my experience is you can't rush these sort of shots, especially something as 
simple as a trainer. You'd think you could get like thousands of these shots done in a day. Reality is you can't. You need to take your time, like adjusting things like the uh, position of the shoelace, um, your composition, uh, then your shadow play, all that sort of stuff. Don't rush the shot and think about your composition, your shadows and your layout and the items that are involved in the shot and your props and your textures, just everything. Just don't rush it. Defo shoot tethered when you can. Ideally, make sure it's a big overcast day where there's no light change and you're shooting in a period of time of say like 20 minutes and no more. If not, try and get a light such as this one or a flash, which would be the best option for all of this stuff really. Oh, and I'll do a, a comparison video of this in the future compared to a bullhead and I think you'll decide yourself, okay, maybe I need one of these if I'm doing serious video or photography work. It's not a fluid head, so it's not good for panning or anything like that, but to get your shots lined up to start with, there's nothing better. Uh, make sure you're actually shooting your shots on a tripod, especially if you're not using flash because your shutter speed is gonna be quite low using various artificial lights and daylight mixtures. So think about textures and props, surfaces, backgrounds, colors, all that stuff when it comes to shooting your product. You can get anything you want really at one of those local home depot stores. I hate saying that word. We're English at B&Q or home base. Um, one of those has so many items that you can use for quite cheap. All of this that I bought was 24 pounds, which to me is gonna be used a lot in the future so to me it's just a little investment into better creative photography those bricks were 47p each i mean come on bargain i think we've got enough variation of shots now to make a series out of it here's the last one quite a nice portrait that looks a bit like this equipment just everywhere oh god let's clear up and then we can get on with the edit so it's the next day cleaning up took a lot longer than i thought but now let's crack on with the editing inside Camera Raw and I'll take you through the process. Let's get on with it. Let's take one of the shots and show you how I would go about editing. Just double click inside a bridge and it will open up inside Photoshop Camera Raw. Now this is just as good as Lightroom. I'll do another video of that in the future. First things first, what do we do? I always like to start with my temperature. It looks too warm at the moment. We want to bring it down a bit to get the, the cool temperature back. Because I was shooting in live view, I could see my exposure, so I know that I'm pretty good. There's nothing that needs really tinkering on the exposure. Contrast, you know, it could always do with a, a tiny bit, so maybe just, just a, a fraction. Uh, highlights, I want to bring down, you can see here, it looks a little bit like I've lost detail. Even though it's saying there is detail there, there's no clipping. I would rather bring that back down so I can keep the brickwork and the texture that comes with the concrete. Now, because we've done the highlights going down, we need to compensate for that and we need to drag our slider up for the shadows. So maybe if we go around plus 70, that is about right. Now I'm gonna bring down the white slider, just a fraction, just because it's a little bit hot still. Texture, that really brings out the detail of like the this canvas part if I slide it quite high so we only want to play with that part of the way so let's go plus 20 clarity again you can go too far with that quite easily if you go too far it becomes too in your face and harsh it's all about subtlety in this program dehaze now that will just take the whole image and kind of give it some oomph but how much do we need of the oomph just about plus 20 I think is about the right amount so now let's have a look at before and after again yeah when you shoot in raw it's always a bit desaturated so i always like to increase the vibrancy a little bit and saturation literally just a fraction just to kind of bring back the color it's looking so much better already i will then apply sharpening maybe it's about 60. we can control this with the masking and if you hold the alt option key and now click on your mask and drag you can see it goes from a pure white, which means it affects everything, if you go the other way, to almost pure black. And you see those white lines? That is the part the sharpening applies to. So we want to find a nice balance of where we're getting 
enough sharp and detail, but not too much for the whole image. And something like around 70 is about right. I'm happy with all the hue. Maybe we will look at some of the saturation. The oranges could be a bit stronger, as you can see. That's for the gum and the sole. So maybe a little bit of that. The reds, the red of that wheel, the red of the tab. Again, that could be a little bit stronger. Do we take some yellow out of the brickwork? I think we do. Blue this is where you're going to obviously want to have your reference with you so you can kind of at least match. Let's go a little bit more saturated. Purples should affect the blue as well. Yeah, so it's kind of like the underlay part of the blue. Want a bit more saturation with them there. Now we go on to luminance and we want to have a look at making the reds a bit brighter. Oranges, yeah, they could be a bit brighter. Now, because the trainer has some canvas detail on it, if I was to increase the luminance, see what happens on the blue. It starts to make it quite, quite coarse. So if I go the other way, it kind of tones down that canvas texture a bit. So if we do that for both the purple and the blue, so it kind of brings back a bit more of the detail that we're losing in this texture area. Now, the next stage is the healing. I go through the image now and I retouch any part that needs attention. For example, this area on the trainer, all of these need looking at. So with your spot removal tool, I'm on heal rather than clone. Paint where we want to change and hopefully the computer will choose an area good, which it hasn't. So now we'll click and drag that and we'll try and line it up as best we can with an area that we think matches. If you click off the overlay, there you can see it's not noticeable now. It can take quite a lot of time and I don't want you to watch it all. So let's speed this bit up quite a lot. Okay, so that's pretty good. The next stage we do split toning orangey for the highlights maybe something around about there so it's almost got that nice now californian sun i'm gonna call it and then we need to counteract the highlights with a, a shadow hue something in the blue area something something like that in terms of the amount of saturation for that not very much so 10 percent now what you've got is you've got the balance slider in the middle and that controls how much shadow versus how much highlight is being used. I think around there is about right. Let's see it before and after. Let's look at the image before and after as well, actually. Let's see how far we've come. Sweet. So what I want to do here is create a little S curve where it becomes, to me, more powerful, this tool, is if you want that almost faded look um, where the blacks are not black black they're almost a wash and to me that's the look i want to go for it's like that magazine look when i bring that point up watch what happens to the shadows of the whole image it now starts to look like almost like it's a, a printed image like it's it's real rather than beautiful crisp photography it suddenly becomes almost more more lifelike so i gotta find a nice point for that Let's have a look at it before and after again. Not bad. Now I'm going to go through and finish editing all the other pictures. And we should then hopefully have a nice selection to show. And uh, let's review them then. Right, so it's time to reveal the finished edits. They are looking pretty sweet. I'm pretty impressed with these actually. Especially when you consider it's all been done with items from B&Q and a cheap £100 light. Just goes to show, you could do this too. Let's have a look at the results. They just look like they are made for a full page advert. And uh, I look forward to putting these in my portfolio on my website and up on Instagram. Show, see if I can get some love on them. But uh, yeah, the whole concept, it worked to me floating blocks and yeah the urban look and most importantly my trellis shadow yeah good stuff and finally 
I get to finally use my trainer for what it's intended for. Thank you for being the star of the show. Uh, time to scuff them up and do some tricks on a skateboard and fall over and then buy some new ones. Cool. Right. That's it for the video. If you've stuck around to the end, thank you. Uh, amazing. And why not hit like and subscribe. And also, I'd love to know what your thoughts are on the images. And have you got any insider tips that you want to share to everyone that watches? Uh, what props you might use down in the comments. Uh, be great to hear your thoughts and also send me some pictures of what you've done. Okay, till next time. Bye.